Are you ready to stop the self-sabotage and create the life you desire? Well, in order for that to happen, you need to break free from the bad beliefs that are holding your success hostage. You need to optimize the stress by turning it into extra energy for success. And those hurtful habits? Well, we need to give that pain a purpose for progress. Welcome to Stop the Self-Sabotage and Create the Life You Desire podcast. Would you agree with me that it seems like people are having a challenge controlling their emotions? All you have to do is get on social media and you, you can see examples of that, right? Well, here's one of the reasons why. Because people are experiencing what's known as decision fatigue. And when you experience dis- decision fatigue, then your emotions begin to rule you instead of you optimizing them. And decision fatigue is hit whenever you use up your resources on how many things you have to agree to during the day. Well, what do I mean by that? The powerful part of your mind, known as your subconscious, does not judge that some decisions take more resources than others. They don't. They all run the same. So whether you're deciding what to wear, um, whether you're deciding uh, what to do with the kids as far as the homeschooling or sending them to school, or do you need to continue to work from home, or do you need to go into the office, or did you bring your mask? You need to go into the store. Do you have your mask? All of those decisions take the same amount of resources. And those resources on what's known as the executive functioning center are limited. So once you hit the limit, then after that, it's gone. And if you experience something that's emotional, after you've hit that limit, you can't make the decision, do I need to experience that emotion? Do I need to move forward on it? Do I need to avoid it? No. That emotion comes out and it runs rampant and it controls you. So what do we need to do? We need to move into what's known as emotional regulation to where we optimize our emotions and they begin to work for us as conditioned responses instead of reactions. See, responses are based on future impact. Reactions are based on past pain. And we're seeing a lot of people right now that are basing their life on past pain. And all you can do then is begin to recreate what you've already had. You're not going to move into what you want. So how do you break that cycle? You break that cycle to where you do this so many times in a row that it becomes part of who you are, your identity. It becomes a habit. You don't even need to think about it. So that way you're not wasting critical resources on do I do this or do I not do this. Those decisions are saved for things that are going to move you forward in life. So as a leader, you need to be able to own it, accept it, and at times apologize for it. So let's move through those three levels. By the way, if you're new to my world, Dawn Ferguson, I am a certified hypnotist, certified instructor. I train others to do this as well as a rapid results coach. Big deal. I have initials behind my name that you really don't care about. What I say is that I have to earn the right to be in your life. And I earned that right by showing you how to get from where you are to where you want to be as quick as possible. Not avoiding what you don't want to have, but instead taking those emotions that would typically turn someone on to be absolutely out of control. And instead, it's going to turn you on to be your very best because those triggers are not going to go away. Having to wear a mask. Oh my gosh, what are we going to do as as far as keeping healthy and still protecting ourselves? Those issues are not going to go away anytime soon. You have to learn to take those triggers and use them to actually bring yourself out at your very best. That's one of the meanings of a leader. See, you have three parts to the identity. 
One is what's known as the employee. The employee says, just tell me what to do. I'm, I'm just here to do a job. And in certain areas of your life, you're like that. Then you have the manager. The manager is all about managing emotions. You think of people in the workplace, managers, as trying to manage other people. No, they don't. They're just trying to manage the group emotions and get everybody moving towards the same direction. That's all managers do. And then you have the leader. The leader is the one who has set the course. There is an area of your life where you're supposed to be leading. And you've abdicated that leadership because you haven't been able to optimize your emotions. You haven't been able to regulate yourself. Instead, your emotions are ruling you. And when that happens, it takes you right down to either being a very poor manager because then you'll try to control others to compensate for yourself or the employee just tell me what to do. There's an area where you're supposed to be shining using your brilliance to make the world a better place. Let's talk about that. Okay. So very first part is own it. And when I'm talking about owning it as a leader, you have to own that there is a solution to the problem, no matter who created the problem. If you're having a challenge that is affecting the quality of your life, you are the one that is going to have to accept the responsibility, response able for finding a way to move it forward. You can point your finger all you want at the bad boss, at the cheating partner, at the outrageous kids. It's not going to do anything. That's the bad emotional manager. Instead, you need to say, I'm going to find a way. And in fact, I'm going to find a way to make it better starting now, starting today. This is not something I need to to research in depth because that's one of the ways that we actually avoid owning the problem is because we have what it, what's it called? Um, paralysis by analysis. We just don't know enough. You know enough to at least get started. So you have to own that no matter who created the problem, you are going to find a way to make your life better starting today. Because when you make your life better, the world's better. Because you're in a better place. Quit sacrificing yourself for others and then hoping hoping you get crumbs left over from them. No. When, when you abdicate your leadership, then you attract in people who recognize that you're a leader in a certain area of life. And they will be more than happy to feed off of your energy and keep you stuck in a low-level place. Because then they use you and your pain as their pedestal for their next level of success. And then they will get you all wound up. See, whoever controls the emotions controls the person. And whatever controls the person and the emotions gets to control the outcome. So when people trigger you on purpose... They're doing it because they can use you. By the way, if you've joined me live, one of the benefits of joining me live is you can ask a question at any time. So just post it down in the comments. Oh, and I've got something else for you. Uh, I have a course called Mission, Vision, Purpose, Path. The only way you can access this course is if you've already worked with me previously or if you put in the comments, hashtag, MVPP, that stands for Mission, Vision, Purpose, Path. And at the end of August, I'm going to do a drawing from everybody who has commented with their aha, with their breakthrough, and I'm going to pull a winner. So for those of you who are catching this rebroadcast on the Stop the Self-Sabotage and Create the Life You Desire podcast, you need to go over to my Facebook page. You need to go over to YouTube, the YouTube channel. And you uh, on one of those, and you need to put in the comments, hashtag MVPP with your aha from today, and you'll be put in the drawing for that course, Mission, Vision, Purpose, Path, which is all about leadership. 
because that's what we've been focusing on for August. Every magnificent mindset has been about your leadership. On Tuesdays, I do lessons learned, usually the hard way, where I'm showing an example from my own life about leadership. On Thursdays, when we do Ask Me Anything for Your Success, I'm talking about leadership because in case you haven't noticed, the world is really lacking in it right now. We need everybody to start taking their rightful place and saying, I'm going to be the leader in this area of my life. And you may go, well, I don't know which area I'm supposed to be leading in. Okay, just start with you. All right, so you got to own it. You've got to own the solution because here's where it get, gets interesting. There's something known as the law of polarity that affects the subconscious mind. And the law of polarity says everything is created a, as a whole. There is no anything created as a half. You see my front side right now. You know I got a back side, okay? It's created as one single unit. You're only seeing this though, my front side, because that's what you're focusing on. All right. When you have a question, when you have a need to know an answer, the answer is there in the same place as the question. You're just not seeing it. You're not seeing it because you're focused on the question. You need to begin to reprogram and recondition your subconscious mind. You got a question, the solution. It's already here. You don't see it because of what's known as a subconscious scotoma. That is a fancy word for blind spot. And you have a blind spot based on your programming and conditioning from when you were in a painful experience in the past. So that painful experience where you had to overcompensate, you had to make the world okay for somebody else. And in doing so, you denied part of yourself. And now you continue to deny the part of yourself that says, we've got the answer. Start telling your subconscious, you got the answer, you need to come up with it. Now, by the way, you probably won't like the answer. That's what I'm going to be talking about tomorrow whenever um, I give you lessons learned, usually the hard way, where I had to cancel a significant commitment on two people that were close to me. and. It was going to screw things up for them. But things won't get any better as long as you continue to make them worse. That's what I'll be talking about tomorrow. Okay, so let's get back to your leadership today and how you can begin to develop self-control, self-regulation, optimization for progress, turning those hopes, dreams, and desires you have into reality. You got to own it. And by owning it, you're telling yourself there's an answer here, subconscious. I want it. I want it and I want to act on it. And then as those answers come over 91 days and you act on them, you implement them as quick as possible. Then you're going to find that you can begin to trust yourself because that's one of the problems that people have when they're missing emotional regulation, emotional control. They don't trust themselves. No. Because you were taught not to trust your instincts. You were taught to ignore that and do for somebody else at the sacrifice to yourself. So now it's time for you to begin to trust yourself. But trust is earned. And that is only earned through consistent action over 91 days. That's how long it takes for what's known as an identity upgrade, which is what we're working on. Okay. Second part. Now you have to accept it. To be able to own the answer, you have to accept Your dark side. Your dark side, also known as your shadow self, are the parts of you that were deemed unacceptable. First, it was unacceptable as you were growing up by others in your environment, others who had some sort of authority in your life. It could have been um, a teacher. It could have been friends that you so desperately wanted to be a part of. could have been a caregiver. But First, they didn't like parts of you and told you that you needed to put that away. And then later on, you decided you didn't like parts of you. Well, you're going to have to accept these parts. And let me give you an example of it. Um, I had uh, a, a group of friends that were all texting back and forth. 
and had one of them over the weekend reach out and go, I am so sick of COVID. Somebody in my office tested positive and now it's interfering with my life and on and on and on. Okay. And I responded back. Yeah. Um, You know, here's what I've accepted in my life is that uh, every time I get in a car, I run a risk of having a car accident. So I take appropriate measures. I wear my seatbelt as well as other uh, other things. But, you know, I still run the risk of having an accident. So cars aren't made to stay in the garage. I'm going to still drive my car and get back out in life. And her response was, well, that's great for you. But it's it's not doing anything for me. I had to accept the fact, and I did this a long time ago, I am insensitive to others whenever they want to bitch, moan, whine, and complain. Came from my painful past when I had to learn to disassociate from the pain I was experiencing mentally, emotionally, and physically as a child. It's my dark side. But until you give your pain a purpose, it will continue to screw up your life. Because I'm not the friend that you're going to turn to to say, hold my hand while I wallow. Because I'm always going to tell you the truth. That's what my insensitivity does. It says, yeah, you know what? Life is hard. And here's another truth. It ain't going to get better. I'm not going to hold your hand and tell you any lies. I'm going to be the one that you seek out after everybody's patted your hand and told you it's going to be okay when evidently it's not. I'm going to be the one that you turn to to go, okay, how do I move forward? So I have to accept the fact that on my dark side, I am insensitive. Now, I don't know what your insensitivity is. Maybe you give too much. Okay, fabulous. Give too much through a charity. Sign up for those volunteer groups. Maybe even start your own foundation. Maybe you worry too much about what others think. That was a text conversation I was having this morning with someone who saw themselves on a video and went, oh my gosh, I don't look powerful and blah, 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 blah. And okay, if you're going to be worried about what others think, Begin to share your authentic side and talk about your challenges and how you've moved through them so that when they do think of you, they think of you that somebody who wants to help them instead of somebody who's poised and polished and on a pedestal. You've got to give your pain a purpose. You've got to give this dark side a job description. Or else it will continue to show up in ways that are inappropriate in your life. You need to bring it out and you need to say, you know what? It's okay that I'm like this and let me find a way to showcase it in life. And instead, most people continue to try to suppress and repress what they should be accepting. Here's something else. Uh, Apologies. I don't ever accept anybody's apology. I don't have to. I've already moved on. Show me through your actions. I accept your truth through your actions. So what are you showing me that way? But at times, I am going to have to apologize for the things that I've done. When you have to apologize for something, You are apologizing for the fact that you have an emotional bank account with someone and your withdrawal that you're having to make on it puts their bank account into a negative balance. So I I had to tell two people I couldn't follow through on my word. I'm going to be talking about that tomorrow. And uh, it put their bank accounts into the negative, their emotional bank accounts, their heart, because I couldn't follow through with my word. And so then I apologized to, to them. When you have to apologize, you apologize because you're making a withdrawal that is going to cause a challenge for someone else. 
You apologize for the fact that things changed and you're what you said yes to, you're going to have to now say no to. But you don't apologize to the world for it. You only apologize to the people that are involved. You know, I see where sports figures, authors, other people get put on pedestals and then the public finds something that they don't agree with. And now they want this thought leader to apologize. Well, if you're following an author, you're following them because you really like the books that they write, not the life that they lead. If you're following a sports figure, it's because you enjoy their athletic prowess, not their political affiliations. You got to be really careful who you put on that pedestal because at some point they are going to disappoint you and then you're going to want to tear them down. Instead, I say put the, the system on the pedestal. That's what should go up there, how they're modeling life. Because nobody is going to be ideal. Nobody's going to be perfect. You know, they say that there was one perfect person. And look what they did to him. They crucified him. You think they're going to do any less to us? So don't put people on the pedestal. Put what they're modeling for you as far as what you're enjoying. And then go out and challenge yourself to be able to do the same thing. So if you're going to apologize for something, You don't apologize to the general public. You apologize to the people that were directly involved with your indiscretion. That's what a true leader does. Okay. If this has made sense to you and you want to know how to take your next step, that's where we utilize hypnosis. We utilize hypnosis to begin to give you emotional optimization. As I said before, the triggers aren't going to go away. But what are they going to trigger? You being out of control or you having your emotions give you the fuel to reach greater heights of success with less effort. You also have to be able to accept your dark side and give those parts of you deemed unacceptable a new job description that is actually going to improve the quality of your life. And you need to begin to experience what rules do you have around holding yourself back that you don't even realize you're acting on and how those are restricting you because they are based on the past pain that you've been through. Well, if you want to explore transformation, It is a package I have where the very first thing we look at is emotional optimization. Then reach out to me, 636-699-7791. You can either call me or you can send me a text. And if you're sending me a text, say transformation. If you call me, I'll call you back because typically I'm not answering the phone. I'm working with clients. I'll send you a text back. And it will give you times when we can have a phone conversation where I, number one, will guarantee you will leave with something that you can use to improve the quality of your life same day. That consult, no charge. And in that consult, we'll decide if we're a good fit for moving together or not. It is time for you to step up as a leader. The world is lacking leadership. People are out of control with their emotions, and then they're pointing the finger at everybody else to make them okay. You need to begin to model how it is done because you're doing it for yourself because when you're better, the world is better. 636-699-7791. You can also go to my website, drewdawnferguson.com. Download a free hypnosis audio. See how you begin to experience the beginning steps of feeling better. You won't get resolution on it, but you will begin to at least feel better. And then reach out to me whenever you want to be better. So until we have our conversation, here's to you making the world a brighter place through your brilliance of leadership.